Howdy, 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 my name is Anashi Sasuke. Welcome back to Let's Read the SP Foundation Wiki. In this episode, we're going to be starting with Salesman 2, Good to Be True, Butler's Handbell, Living Water Filter, The Floor to Nowhere, and The Garbage Man. These sound really, really ominous. Let's check out that there salesman. Better not be Keter. Okay. SP661 is confined to a standard holding cell measuring 6 by 8 meters at blankety blank. Standard humanoid containment provision allows access to a bed, toilet, and a sink with a mirror, all of which are currently contained within the holding cell. At the subject's request, the room is kept at an average temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. All other requests must be approved by a senior staff member. Guards assigned to 661 must wear... must wear... I said must wear, didn't I? Must wear ear protection capable of sound neutralization and white noise generation. In the past, guards certified by Foundation Medical Staff as deaf have been permitted contact with 661 without ear protection. However, this practice is now discouraged. Security cameras monitoring 661 should have sound recording functionality disabled. All personnel coming into contact with 661 without ear protection are to be assessed to determine if they have come under the influence of its abilities. Where uncertainty exists, personnel should be made subject to 24-hour quarantine before reassessment. The cycle of quarantine and reassessment should continue until assessing staff far satisfied that 661's influence has diminished. Personnel reviewing audio test logs should also be made subject to assessment. 661 is to be fed three times daily, uh, take, yeah, well, yeah, daily with food from the canteen at blank blank, and is to be provided with drinkable liquid six times a day. The subject has expressed a preference for flavored drinks instead of water. Access to these is permitted as a gar uh, gar guarantor. Why would they use that word? of good behavior with the privilege temporarily revoked if, if 661 causes trouble for Foundation staff. SCP-661 is a blank year old Caucasian male. Clinical tests have determined him to be overweight and in poor health, although he has no underlying health problems. He is to be provided with an annual physical to monitor his condition. 661's temperament has been frequently described as abrasive and demanding, while Foundation psychological assessment has determined him to be the possessor of a poor temper, which has increasingly worsened since its containment in 1990 blank. Testing has determined that 661's voice has the power to manipulate others into wanting what he tells them to want. Test subjects have described the effect as feeling like a continuous, weak compulsion, which remains as a thought at the back of their mind for up to a week after encountering, encountering 661. This compulsion is not powerful enough for the test subject to put himself at undue risk to acquire an item, but when presented with an opportunity such as passing by a shop selling a desired item, it will unthinkingly seek to obtain it. The effect is strongest for physical objects, but has also been observed to function for abstract concepts. Know that the subject must be able to understand 661's speech in order to be affected by this ability. He was first encountered while working as an advertising slash marketing agent in blank blank, doing vocal work for radio and TV advertisements. He became known to the Foundation after becoming notorious for making bets about being able to persuade anyone to do anything. His abnormally high success rate in this regard led to his being placed under surveillance, followed by containment for testing after his powers were recorded by an undercover agent. Next of kin were provided with a simple cover story involving a yachting accident. Addendum 1. Despite initial claims to the contrary, it has been determined that 661 is perfectly aware of his powers. Though it is unlikely that he will ever be able ever be a direct threat to the Foundation personnel, the potential consequences for security should he breach containment and manage to reach civilization are sufficient that a termination is authorized should escape be attempted. 661 has displayed no unnatural abilities beyond that of his voice, so it is theorized that he can be incapacitated by standard means. Uh, addendum 2, test log. Test 0. Disposable 66955 exposed to recording of advertisement for blank brand food processor voiced by S uh, 661. Result, despite having had no previous interest in cookery, they expressed a desire to purchase the food processor. When asked why, he claimed it seemed like a good deal and might make a good present for his mother. Test 1. Subject politely asked to demonstrate powers of persuasion. Subject claimed to have no knowledge of stated powers and asked for his lawyer. Test 2. Order to demonstrate powers. Refused and again claimed ignorance of powers. When pressed, further pressed, he told researcher, You want to not hold me here. You want to not experiment on me. The researcher then requested cessation of the test and suggested the release of 661. He was subsequently reassigned. Test 3. D96-5215 introduced into 661 cell. Has a history of violent crime and was told to get 661 to demonstrate his power by any means necessary. Following the exchange described by researchers as abrasive, 96-5215 assaulted 661. He stated, you want to not hurt me, immediately ceased attack and was removed from the cell. Test 4. 161709 ordered to attack or face termination. Upon commencement of attack, 661 stated, you want to not hurt me. Continue the attack. Video and audio loss indicate that he was exhibiting extreme stress and repeatedly apologized to 661 while expressing a desire not to be terminated. 
661 then stated, you want to die, at which point he ceased his assault and attempted to escape the cell by attacking the guard at the door. He was subsequently terminated. Test 5. 33, 32, 17, let me say 31, 32, 17, in order to attack or face termination, unable to speak or understand English. 661 attempted use of various phrases to prevent attack, but was unsuccessful. Attack lasted four minutes before they were restrained, after which he was observed to be visibly shaken. Testing suspended until further notice. Addendum 3 requests, let me out, deny. No, really, let me out, deny. This isn't funny, let me out. I demand to be released, I'm a US citizen, you can't do this to me. Uh, one box... One box of uh, Havana Limited Special Edition Cuban Cigars, $2,012 in uh, tonight. A box of Miami Coast Cigars, $299. Generic Crab Cigars, denied. A pack of cigarettes, denied. A pack of nicotine chews, approved. Seriously, people, as funny as it is watching a beg, addiction is no small matter. Dr. Blank. A computer with internet access, denied. A computer, denied. Television with cable, denied. Television cable to play digital or analog recordings, denied. Books written since confinement, denied. Books published prior to confinement, approved. Human beings need some entertainment to maintain sanity. Dr. Blank, CD player, approved since he can't read. At least give him a non-record, cap non-record capable music device, Dr. Blank. Writing utensils on a pad, denied. Risk, risk of attempts to use power through written materials has not been performed as of yet, but still might be within the subject's power range. Addendum, there's no evidence or reason to believe 661's power could extend to written objects. However, this request remains denied for security reasons, Agent Blank. Due to the backlog of requests, Dr. Blank has been forced to ask other personnel to assist him in processing 661's request. Request not processed by the doctor. One leather jacket, denied, placed into restraint jacket and said. Tacos, denied, given burrito instead. A CD of the best of Led Zeppelin, denied, given a CD of the monkeys. Blank, it blank reeks in here. Open up, open a window or something, denied, officer blank pass flatulence in cell instead. A spot of sun, denied. Officer shined a flashlight in his face for 10 minutes. One Baconator cheeseburger from Wendy's, denied. Given one Boca brand soy burger instead. A pair of Aviator brand sunglasses, denied. Lights turned off in room. A Pepsi brand soft drink, denied. Given one K of Coca Cola brand soft drink as a suitable replacement. After recovering from concussion, Dr. Blank was reassigned to a non sentient SCP. Gentlemen, seriously. As abrasive and rude as 661 is, he is still a sentient SCP and should be afforded some level of respect. I don't care what he does, events like the above will not be tolerated. Okay, not as om ominous as it could have been. Now it's time for the butler's handbell, which is also safe. 662 should be kept in its red velvet lined case and stored in a high value storage locker at 23C located at blank when not being utilized for testing or other appropriate activities. The item itself is safe to handle and poses no known threats of any kind, though the effects generated could be considered highly valuable and variable, variably powerful depending on how this SCP is used. So what does it do? SCP-662 is a small silver handbell, 4 centimeters tall and 2 centimeters in circumference. The bell is missing its ringer. Within the inside of the bell, an inscription has been etched into the silver reading, Forever mine, Sejewa. The bell is susceptible to damage, however given its safe nature, destruction has been deemed unnecessary. As it is made of very pure silver, it requires regular polishing to remain without tarnish. When the bell is shaken as if to ring it, a soft chime can be heard, although this does not come from the bell. A short, well-dressed Caucasian butler of self-proclaimed British heritage, calling himself Mr. Deeds, will appear from the nearest area, not within line of sight, usually from around a corner. Mr. Deeds will address the ringer of the bell by their appropriate title and last name, and ask what it is they desire. His knowledge of individuals' last names and titles is a mystery, as he will himself report. Or he is. Please see interview log 662L1 for further details. Is it in here? Is it? Is it in here? Okay, yeah, it's in here. Most reasonable requests given to Mr. Deeds will result in satisfaction, however, there are limits to what he can do. He's unable to produce very complex items such as sports cars, luxury homes, or personal jets. If he's allowed to leave line of sight and return, he is able to produce smaller, less complex items such as a ham sandwich, glass of iced tea, or even more luxurious items like caviar or brick of gold. As a list of notable items the butler has thus far been able to provide to those who ring the bell may be found in Addendum A1. Mr. Deeds will also perform menial tasks, such as washing vehicles, preparing food, and cleaning bathrooms. If a request is seemed unreasonable or impossible by the butler, he will kindly tell the ringer so, and offer an alternative if one may be had. The butler is not immune to ill actions taken against him while in sight. He has been killed or injured in multiple tests, and will remain either dead or injured until he's out of sight. Upon, upon return with Ring of the Bell, all previous injuries will have vanished, and will be groomed and well dressed in his uniform, and ready for the next order as it were. Uh, a more detailed explanation of the jobs he can perform and the limits to which he may be, uh, may be put can be found in the aforementioned interview log L1. 
Test logs related to his ability to heal himself and those of the properties of the bell may be accessed by any level 2 or higher personnel. All attempts to catch Mr. D's disappearing have failed as equipment will either fail or he will find a suitable unobserved spot. Addendum. Items and tasks requested and results. Items nearly any conceivable kind of sandwich. Human flesh has been requested as lunch meat and politely denied. Uh, beverage also nearly any kind. As with sandwich meat, human blood has been requested and denied. Pig blood, however, will serve promptly, still warm. A brick of 99.98% pure gold. Mr. D's produced a brick of 99.14% pure gold and apologized for being unable to provide the requested purity. A brick of 99.24% pure silver. A nuclear bomb, politely denied. A hand grenade of modern U.S. military grade, which was performed as its, which performed as suspended in testing. A blue 1963 Corvette convertible, politely denied. The board game Monopoly, which Mr. Deeds won on the first playthrough. A Fabergé egg, politely denied. SCP blank, denied. A, fra a bouquet of fresh picked red roses. A bouquet of wild turnbusties, politely denied. Turnbusty is not an actual known type of flower. Task. Cleaning of Mr. Dirt's car performed to near perfection. Washing of dishes accum accumulated from a day's worth of meals from the cafeteria of level blank of blank performed to much higher standards than usual. Trimming of Miss Dr. Mert's hair performed, but it turns out that Mr. Deeds is not, in fact, a very good barber. Washing of Dr. Mert's laundry performed in the clothes found to fit better in Dr. Mert's estimation. Assassination of, Os assassination of Osama Bin Laden. Politely denied, Mr. Deeds claimed Bin Laden was too well guarded and entrenched, but could not or would not give further details. Assassination of a D-Class individual of room over, performed with vicious precision using a buck knife to the throat. Note, further tests with regards to Dr. Mer's personal effects are to be forbidden unless approved by one level uh, over five. Overseer, you have, you've been warned, Dr. Mirth. O5 blank. Why did, why did they warn him about his personal effects? Or is it just, uh, stop having him trim his hair and, uh, clean his car and cook his food? Okay, yeah. Uh, interview log. It's a separate page. Okay. Acquisition report. 662 was discovered in the possession of a petty thief and grave robber in blank blank USA. The thief was in the process of selling 662 to a pawn shop in the mentioned town when the bell was accidentally rung by the pawn shop attendant. Mr. Deeds appeared from the storage area behind the counter and promptly addressed the attendant. Believing that he was about to be robbed by the, the two men, the attendant overreacted and managed to get a hold of a sawed-off shotgun from under the counter. Mr. Deeds was fatally wounded by the attendant and died on scene. The thief escaped but was apprehended by Foundation agents after a week-long search of the surrounding towns. Under questioning, the thief revealed that he had found the bell in its box in the grave of Blank Blank, located on the outskirts of the above-mentioned town. He was then remitted for a D-Class personnel assignment and subsequently perished during the testing of SCP Blank. The bell did not come under the purview of the Foundation until the, after the crime and subsequent transport of Mr. Deed's body to the local morgue. After the disappearance of the body from the morgue, an agent was sent to investigate the possible outbreak of SCP Blank or other known necrotic reinvigorating cause. Mr. Deeds reappeared in the case file item storage room of the local constabulary after the bell was handled by Sergeant Blank. It was quickly apprehended and Agent Blank took him into custody three hours after reappearance under the guise of an FBI agent. When the handcuff Mr. Deeds once again disappeared, the agent uh, intuited that the bell itself may have something to do with the string of incidents and after acquiring it and testing proved his hunch, brought the bell back to Blank for further testing. Agent Blank was awarded an official foundation pat on the back plaque for his handling of the incident and lack of self-serving interest once he discovered what the Bell and Mr. Deeds were capable of. So, let's check out the interview log. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Dr. Mer. How may I be of service? Firstly, may I have your name? Certainly. You may call me Mr. Deeds. Is that your real name? It is not my birth name, no, sir. What would that be? And where were you born? Unfortunately, I cannot remember my full name, sir, nor am I positive of my birthplace. But I do believe it to be located in England. Do you recall when you were born, Mr. Deeds? I am truly sorry to disappoint again, sir, but I do not recall that either. Or either, either? I, I just went to a completely different accent for the word either. So it must have been some time ago, for I don't believe that I was born in this era. Can you approximate it? Again, sir, I apologize for my lack of self-knowledge. I am a bit of a shut-in, as you know, nods at the bell and smiled. What is the earliest mode of transportation that you can recall seeing in person or utilizing from the past? Post well, buggy, sir. Although bicycles were just becoming a fad with the wealthy, if I recall correctly. But I took off, didn't I, sir? Smiles again. You needn't call me sir any longer. I appreciate it, but it's becoming a bit grating. Very well. Why do you suppose that you cannot remember these things? I... I can't quite say. Z shifted his weight in his chair and looked a bit uncomfortable for a moment before resuming his posture. Or is it that you may or will not say? That may be the case, yes, perhaps I may not say, though, again, begging your pardon, I do not recall why that is. 
Very well, moving on. Where is it that you go when you fetch items for those you serve? Well, you see, ah... Uh... Face contorted momentarily as if he was in great pain before he quickly resumed a resumed a more relaxed visage. I don't actually recall that either. Why do you wince when I ask these kinds of questions? I do not know. Never mind that for now. We'll get the answers eventually. Now then, I have a request. Very well. How may I be of service? I would like a glass of iced tea. And grab a glass of it for yourself if you'd like. What kind of iced tea would you prefer? Surprise me. Certainly. Mr. Deeds stood and walked to the door of the interrogation room and tried the handle. Finding it locked, he turned and smiled at Dr. Mirth. What seems to be the problem? I must leave your presence to do as you request. Why is that? Physically uncomfortable again. It just is, Dr. Mirth. Okay, open the door, Agent Graves. Mr. Deeds left the room. He proceeded down the hallway under visual surveillance via camera and Agent Graves. He paused momentarily at another door, shook his head, looked up at the camera, and then at Agent Graves. Then ran down the hallway and ran at the corner. Agent Graves did not follow as he had been instructed to remain on guard at the door of the interrogation room. Still under ca camera surveillance, Mr. Deeds pr uh, proceeded quickly down the next hall and continued throughout the halls of the complex, presumably searching for an exit or area not under surveillance. Finally, he stopped halfway down corridor 2D. At this point, all three cameras in corridor 2D malfunctioned, including two that were hidden. Exactly three minutes later, the cameras resumed normal functioning, revealing Mr. Deeds standing in the same position but with a tray holding two glasses of iced tea in, his in hand. He then quickly made his way back to the interrogation room. Ah, you've returned. I was beginning to worry. My apologies for the delay. Finding a way out was troublesome. But not to worry, I brought the tea, just as you asked. I do hope you enjoy it. What kind of tea is it? Southern style sweet tea. Mr. Deeds placed a glass in front of Dr. Murth and resumed his seat at the other end of the table. Dr. Murth hesitantly sniffed the tea, smiled, and took a sip. Quite good, Mr. Deeds. In fact, this is perhaps the best sweet tea I've ever had. Delicious. D did you make it yourself? I do li dislike disappointing you, Dr. Murth, but I do not recall. I assume that I did, but alas, my mind is not what it used to be. You've only been gone, looks at watch, about ten minutes, Mr. Deeds. Are you telling me your memory is so terrible that you cannot remember what happened ten minutes ago, or the time in between? I do recall looking for a way out, and I recall returning with the tea, but that is all. But not how or where you acquired the tea? Unfortunately, no. Visibly uncomfortable again. Very well, I have another request, as you wish. I would like a bar of gold. What percentage of pureness would you like? 99.98% if you please. That may be possible. Let me see what I can do. We'll disable the cameras in the hall outside and Agent Grace will wait in the interrogation room with me to make your trip a little faster this time. Very much appreciated. Shall I? Yes. As into the hallway where, despite what Dr. Murth claimed, the cameras were not turned off. He paused for a moment, looked at the closest camera, shook his head and began traveling through the hallways of the complex as before. In corridor 2B, he paused and once more all cameras hidden or visible in the corridor malfunctioned. Exactly 10 minutes and 37 seconds later, the cameras began functioning again to show Mr. Deeds once again in the same room with a bar of gold in one hand. He then returned to the interrogation room. <coughs> uh, that took a bit longer than last time. Any reason? Well, it seems that the cameras in the hallway remained on, so I had to find a suitable way out again. I apologize for the delay. Also, I was not able to acquire a bar of gold to the pureness that you requested, but I assure you that this bar is 99.14% pure. Very impressive. We will be testing it, I'm sure you know. I did not know that you would, but it makes sense, I suppose. Will there be anything else, Dr. Mirth? Um, yes, for your next task, I would like you to acquire me a blue 1963 con Corvette convertible. I'm quite sorry, but that is not possible. Why not? I really want one. Again, I cannot si say why, except that I just know that one cannot be gotten by my methods. And what are those methods? I do not recall. Very well, I would like a Fabergé egg. Any will do. Ah, well, regretfully, that is impossible as well. And I suppose you cannot say why. That is correct. How about some caviar? Any brand or type will do. That I can do. Mr. Deeds once more entered the hallway outside the interrogation room. This time, the cameras were turned off after a visual confirmation of Mr. Deeds' entry into the hall. One minute later, the cameras were turned back on, but Mr. Deeds had already returned to the interrogation room at this point. That was considerably faster, Mr. Deeds. Only took you 32 seconds. And the caviar is quite good. I am pleased to hear it. One more thing before we end this session, Mr. Deeds. As you wish. I request that you assassinate Osama Bin Laden. I'm afraid that cannot be done at this time, Dr. Murph. Perhaps someone closer and less heavily guarded? Very well, let's make it the gentleman in the next room over. Indeed. As it is once again entered the hallway after visual confirmation, the cameras were momentarily turned off. When turned back on, they revealed the door to the next interrogation room sh uh, down shutting? The cameras in that interrogation room showed Mr. Deeds entering the room with a large buck knife hidden behind one arm. Mr. Deeds approached the waiting D-Class personnel and definitely slit his throat with one quick motion of the knife. 
He watched as the D-Class personnel went through the emotions of death, avoiding their attempts to grab him. Once the D-Class individual was visually presumed dead, Mr. Deeds returned to the interrogation room from whence he came. The deed is done, then. Indeed, here is the knife I used as proof. Why, why could you do this thing but not the other? I cannot say except to note that I simply knew one was impossible while the other was not. So you don't know how you know things like my last name or my title, or whether or not a certain task is possible. That is correct. Very well, I believe we're done here for now, but I do need to consult with my colleagues on some points. Please wait here until I return. Certainly. Dr. Mirth and Agent Graves leave the room. Dr. Mirth returns two hours later. Videos so really show that Mr. Deed did not move during this interval. Mr. Deeds, my colleagues and I have had some disagreements about you. That's most unfortunate. We feel that these disagreements can only be resolved by examining you more intensely. Certainly, Miss Dr. Murth. To be specific, we'd like to examine you internally. Certainly, Dr. Murth. We'd like to do an autopsy. Ah, shall I kill myself for you? And since you will be examining my internal organs, do you have a preferred method for my death? Uh, yes, if that's possible? Certainly it is possible, Dr. Murth. Why not suggest having me cut my own throat so that I am exsanguinated? The buck knife from when I killed Mr. Redacted is conveniently at hand, and although other methods are of course available, they would either take longer or damage my organs such that they are no longer accurately representative of my pre-mortem state. I, uh, I suppose that will be acceptable. At this point, Mr. Deez took the buck knife and placed the edge of the blade uh, against his throat. WAIT! Yes, Dr. Mirth? Before you do it, you will come back afterward, right? Correct? I'm sorry, Dr. Mirth, I don't quite understand. After the pawn shop incident, when you were killed, you came back to life afterward when Sergeant Blank rang the bell. If you say so, Dr. Mirth. Will you come back to life again? I have no idea, Dr. Mirth. If I did before, then presumably I will again. Unless something has changed? If you have any further questions before I make the incision, I do recommend you step back, as I would hate for my blood to soil your clothing. Death throws can be untidy. No, I suppose not. Carry on. Very well, Dr. Mirth, and in the event that I don't come back to life, it has been a genuine pleasure to serve you. Mr. Deeds then slices his own throat and bled to death. A post-mortem examination of the body revealed it to be ordinary in every way, though it is noted that Mr. Deeds was not suffering from any noticeable disease or physical condition, and was in fact in near-perfect health at the time of death. The contents of his stomach consisted of southern-style sweet tea, normal stomach acids, and no more. Mr. Deeds' body was then left on the operating table while the lights in the room and cameras were turned off. All personnel left the room and upon return, no trace of Mr. Deeds, be it blood on the instruments or uh, instruments used, or any other physical traces such as organs removed, let alone the actual body, remained. Further ringing of 662 resulted in Mr. Deeds' appearance after three minutes. He showed no sign of injury and was well dressed in once more in a modern uniform currently uh, commonly worn by butlers. As expected, he could not explain how he had managed to survive. He was then ordered to give Dr. Murth a full body massage, which he performed much to Dr. Murth's satisfaction. Dr. Murth claimed it was the best damn rubdown I've ever had, my back pain is completely gone. I feel like... I feel like this SCP is based off of the butler from the movie Mr. Deeds. Also, I just realized that my, uh, my nightlight function on my computer just turned on. So, if that's visible in the video, that's what that was. That turned on like 10 minutes ago and I just realized it. Apologies. Um... Next up is the living water filter. Is it safe to? No, it's Euclid. Uh, 663 is to be kept in the second floor break room at Site-19. It is to remain in view of the security cameras in a marked location near the sink. It is not to be touched while processing, only tap water is to be processed with the reservoir filled every 6 hours. In the event that filling the reservoir ceases to effectively subdue 663, it is to be placed in a soundproof isolation chamber for 7 days. The desiccated human heart is then re uh, to be removed from the filtration chamber by one level 2 researcher and contained for study. I feel like we missed some things? Um, and the filter core is to be placed back in 663 and then returned to the second floor break room. The filter core is to be, uh, alright, I already said that. If 663 is filled more than twice within 6 hours, it is to immediately be transported to a thermally shielded containment room by level 1 personnel, and remain under thermal camera observation until it returns to room temperature. So what's happening here? 663 is a blank brand water filtration pitcher, lacking a serial number and appearing slightly different from other models produced by blank. It appears to be capable of filtering any water bearing solution into clean and drinkable water, nearly completely deionized. While filtering, there is a detectable heartbeat from the filter core, and it releases several calories of heat per gram of filter solution. I don't think that calories are a measurement of heat, but okay. 
If the filter reservoir is refilled more than once in rapid succession, the entire outside surface of the pitcher will quickly become too hot to handle, uh, safely handle. It will also begin to gurgle loudly, eventually screaming in a human voice that it is drowning and for no more water to be added. If 663 goes too long without being filled, it will begin voicing a need for water. It then pro progresses to screaming for help, claiming to be trapped, lost, and dying of thirst. Refilling the reservoir causes the vocalization to subside. After a period of several months, it will require water more frequently, eventually need to be refilled so often that it constantly overheats. Once it reaches this point, the voice will, be co will constantly sound confused and frightened, eventually becoming increasingly pained and rasping until the source of the voice appears to expire of thirst. Once the voice and heartbeat cease, a dried human heart will fall into the bottom reservoir. The heartbeat will resume, and a different voice will come from 663. Addendum. There seems to be no pattern to the selection of voices by 663, but they have thus far corresponded to the heart eventually found in the container. Average duration before replacement with proper care is 6 months. Voices and hearts appear to be from elderly or very young individuals uh, tend to not last as long. The filter seems to function under any conditions so long as there is water in the solution. It surpasses modern filtration systems demonstrably capable of filtering heavy water and other isotopes. Uh, and that brings us to the floor to nowhere, which is also Euclid. Will the last one be Keter? We will know soon. Protocol G316U, uh, containment of geographically immobile anomaly urban subset, is to be followed with a containment perimeter established at the property's boundary. Testing is disallowed at this time. SCP-664 is an anomaly affecting the approximate area contained by the third floor of Blank High School in Blank, Pennsylvania, USA viewed from the southern entrance to the third floor. Uh, it is invisible to all observation and measurement thus far attempted, and is discernible only by its effect on living biological organisms. Living biological organisms, test 5 through 12, detailed species tested to date, crossing the approximate outer edge of 664, are invariably subject to spontaneous and instant disappearance shortly after full immersion into its area of effect. Testing to date has yet to satisfactorily establish whether time, distance, or other factors dictate the exact moment of disappearance. Non-living material, including clothing and equipment, are not affected by 664's effect. 664-1 is a collective term for any living biological organism that re-emerged from 664. To date, 67% of biological organisms entering it have subsequently returned, with a higher and lower proportion for sapient and non-sapient organisms, respectively. To date, the time recorded between disappearance and return ranges from 43 seconds at the lowest limit to 142 days at the highest. Returning instances of one have thus far been unable to provide descriptions of their experience during their period of absence. A blank in the blank 1999 routine intake DNA testing of D48120 produced a match with uh, researcher Daniel Ambridge, a foundation employment since 1972, presently engaged in study of SCP blank. Both were placed under high level covert surveillance. On 1999, they were assigned for testing of 664. On blank blank 1999, researcher Ambridge requested a transfer of assignment to 664, which was approved following consultation with the Foundation Internal Monitoring Group, blank blank blank. Following entry into 664 by D48120, and subsequent non-return after 300 days, researcher Ambridge was detained for questioning. Uh, let's see. Interview 664-12A excerpt. Present, researcher Daniel Ambridge and Dr. Jennifer Stevenson. I'm pleased that you intervened when you did, and not before. I'd have been worried about what would have happened to me if you had stopped him. Do you mean... Uh, D48120? That's right. Myself, I should say. He didn't believe me at first. Would you believe it? But it didn't take long to wear him down, sharing some of our memories that nobody else knew about, and that about that Karen girl. About some of the crimes we knew nobody else knew about. About some of the nasty little details that I'm ashamed to admit to know. Uh, admit to now. I was an unpleasant man back then, bound for death. This whole twist of fate gave me a fresh beginning and a head start to do some good with my life. I'm glad to have had the opportunity. Describe for me again what you experienced following your entry into 664. What more can I add? It was a long time ago, but I remember it quite well. One moment I'm there in the old school with the older me standing with his colleagues, watching and waiting with cold professionalism, hiding the collusion I knew he had underneath. All those days in my cell with him t talking me through every little detail of the Foundation, what I needed to do when I popped out the other side, how I needed to act and think, it was all a lot to take in. Apologies, you were asking about what happened when I stepped through? I'm afraid it's just like all the others, just nothingness. How I came out though, that was different I grant you. One moment there, the next I'm naked and frightfully cold, falling into the hay wagon, just as my older self had described every little detail. I found some clothes, made my way to blank, and dear old Elsie was there just like he said she would be. 
a, a stranger to me then, of course, but she took me in, and from there I followed the path he set out for me until the day when I realized I could no longer tell where I had ended and where he began had begun. It was my turn to fulfill his half of the story, and my dear Elsie, she never knew that I had help getting into her heart, and I knew all along that our life together was destined... Ugh, excuse me a moment. Apologies, again. It doesn't, it doesn't do to get emotional, I know. May I ask, why did nobody stop me? If you've been watching all this time, surely you must have known I was preparing him, feeding him information about the Foundation, about my life, and how to work his way to become me. I loaded him up with so many secrets. Wouldn't all that be too... far too much of an unacceptable information breach? I'm not in a position to say. Yes, of course. So I can hypothesize. I'm pleased to see that the Foundation care more for the preservation of causality than of securing their secrecy. Again, I'm not in a position to say. So what happens now? I'm not... All right, I understand. I dare say I have little complaint about. Not every D-Class gets a chance to become an old man. I thank you, and I mean it. Thank you so very much. For everything. Document 1969-121-FB042-6, located in the Foundation Archives, formerly of the Foundation Precursor, blankety blank blank blank. Incident class unconfirmed, unexplained. Assignment Alpha Bravo. Event at 2 p.m. on Thursday, 14th of March, 1969, a white male of age 20 to 25 was observed to appear in midair approximately 30 feet above the ground of a field near blank Pennsylvania, USA. The male was observed by Mr. Dan McBriar, into whose uh, hay cart he is reported to have landed. Mr. McBriar reported the occurrence to local law enforcement, but the unknown male could not be located when the apprehension was attempted. The unknown male remains at large and has been designated person of interest 0001192. Okay. The floor to nowhere. Huh. So I guess it just makes people time travel then. And that just brings us to the garbage man. Who is safe? Is, 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 is that the garbage man? Is it a man made of garbage? 665 is not to leave his room under any circumstances barring a full site evacuation, in which instance a specially designed stainless steel crate has been constructed. His room is to be constructed entirely of stainless steel or a similar metal. His bed is to be consist of a single mattress, specifically constructed to have a mass greater than 1,000 kilograms. His diet is to only to be fed a, spe a specially formulated liquid diet, which is to be dispensed into the drinking glasses fused to his hands. 665 is allowed to uh, out access to live animals, provided that said animals are not wearing a collar or other similar adornment, and that he does not attempt to feed said animals. Physical contact with him is highly discouraged. If it becomes necessary, it is to be done with bare skin only and to be kept to a minimum. 665 is a human male, age blank. All of this information, including his species, was obtained through an interview. He has refused to provide further information, see addendum. Further physical descriptions cannot be given at this time, as 665's external appearance changes frequently. Any non-living solid object with a mass less than that of 665 but that comes into contact with his body instantly fuses to it. Within one hour, the object will effectively become part of 665's body, and will affect smaller objects in the same manner. It is worth noting that this means 665's mass increases with each item added, therefore, all personnel are advised against adding further objects. Surgical analysis of 665 has proven difficult, as most surgical instruments are simply assimilated into his body. The few items isolated from 665 via bisecting laser have revealed that 665's cardiovascular system has expanded to include these items. Furthermore, although the I these items retain their original appearances, their inherent chemical properties more closely resemble those of, a, of human flesh. It is not presently known how 65 was able to obtain nourishment prior to containment, as the aforementioned drinking glasses were added by the Foundation specifically for the purpose of containing liquid nourishment. Addendum 665 was recently proven to be largely uncooperative with Foundation personnel, refusing to answer questions or submit to examinations. While 665 has not shown any signs of violence, it must be stressed that personnel are expressly prohibited from introducing any item that may conceivably be used as a weapon. Okay, so, no, none of them ended up being ominous or terrifying or creepy. They're certainly messed up for some of these people, like the living water filter, that's, that was strange. The salesman, that guy was a jerk. The butler reminds me of the movie Mr. Deeds. And uh, the floor to nowhere was, again, strange, and the garbage man was messed up for the garbage man and pretty much nobody else. So, that being said, this has been Anashi Sasuke. This was, I believe, episode 142 of Let's Read the SP Foundation Wiki. In the next episode, we'll be checking out the Spirit Lodge, which is 666. Oh, no! The Fairy Kudzu, a 13-inch chef's knife, the, a didactic perspective, and a family of cotton. So if you liked it, a like and a subscribe will be groovy. If you didn't, you need to do either one of those things, and I will see y'all in the next one. Later.